Hi, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and we're going to talk about ventricular premature beats in this chapter. We talked about atrial premature beats in the last chapter, so let's go on to the bottom chamber. So here's our electrical system with the atria and the ventricles. And of course, with a normal beat, you expect the electrical signals to arise from the sinus node, spread rapidly across the top chamber, giving rise to a P wave. You have a little PR segment as the electrical signal moves through the AV node. And then as the signal goes down the Purkinje system and to the ventricles, you get a QRS that looks pretty narrow. And then, of course, a T wave for repolarization. Now, what does a ventricular premature beat look like? Now, keep in mind that ventricular action potentials look pretty characteristic. And during the part of the action potential in between beats, that's phase four, there can be a diastolic depolarization that, if it reaches the threshold voltage, will cause another action potential to occur. And this action potential can propagate. It can start on the right side, and it can propagate towards the left, or on the other hand, it could start on the left side someplace and then propagate towards the right. So either way, what you have is a beat that arises from the ventricle, the bottom chambers. If it arises from the bottom chambers, it's not going to take the normal Purkinje system. And so it's going to take a while for that signal to make its way around the heart. And so PVCs, or ventricular premature beats, are usually wide, wider than the normal conduction system. Since they're coming from the bottom chamber, you should not see a P wave in front of a PVC. And in fact, the ventricles should activate independently from the atrium. If the ventricles are acting independently from the atrium, we refer to a situation known as AV dissociation. Now remember, the terminology that applied to atrial premature beats also applies to ventricular premature beats. You can have couplets, which means there are two ventricular premature beats in a row. You can have a triplet, which means there are three premature beats in a row. You can have bigeminy, which means every other beat is a ventricular premature, and trigeminy, meaning every third beat is premature. There's actually a quadrigeminy that some people talk about, and I'm sure you can imagine what that means. So let's look at some strips and let me show you what I'm talking about. Now here's a rhythm strip. And uh, if you look at the forest, you can see it does clearly look a little irregular here. In fact, you can even sort of say, look at that, there's group beating here. There's a group, groups of two. And then at the end, it looks like there's two fairly normal beats with a P and a QRS that looks fairly consistent. Well, let's uh, just for the sake of uh, clarity, take out our calipers and we can move those calipers up to where the uh, P to P interval is. And uh, what's the rate here? 300, 150, 175. It's about um, 82 beats a minute or so, 85 perhaps. And if you measure the QRS complexes, they seem to be pretty much on track, maybe about 40 milliseconds off. Okay, so with these two beats, you now have a sense of what the underlying rhythm is doing. So now let's go look at these, um, these groups of beats here. And the first thing you notice is that the two beats of the group look different. One is going down and one is going up. The ones that are going down, these look a lot like these normal beats. And we've already decided that these are normal sinus beats because of the shape of the P wave and the rate. So here are the normal beats. And lo and behold, in front of each normal beat, you have a normal looking P wave. And here's another P here. So if we've already decided that the sinus rate is going at um, 80 beats a minute, let's take our calipers and put it on the beginning of the P wave. And so the next P wave, you'd expect to land right at the tip of this caliper. But what you see is this, this QRS complex, which is different from the underlying QRS. If you look at this QRS, it's maybe about 100 milliseconds in duration. And this one looks to be maybe a little bit longer, perhaps 120 milliseconds. Kind of hard to see where the end of the QRS is. So it looks to be a little bit wider. Now, is there a P wave in front of it? We do not see a P wave in front of this beat. Could there be a P buried on the T wave? You always have to ask yourself, is there a premature atrial beat buried on the T wave? Well, this T wave looks pretty smooth. And if you compare it with these T waves here over on the right side, it looks to be the same. So I cannot honestly say that I can tell that there's a P wave in this T wave. So what's happening here is you probably have a normal sinus beat that's occurring, but before that P wave has a chance to even show itself, you've got this beat 
which is arising from the ventricle. So this is your ventricular premature beat. It has no P wave in front of it because it came from the ventricle. It's a little bit wider than a normal beat, and it clearly looks completely different because it's taking a different pathway within the ventricle. It's not following the normal conduction system. You do have some bizarre-looking ST T-wave abnormalities, which goes along with the fact that the normal Purkinje system is not being used. What follows a PVC is generally a pause until the next sinus beat kicks in. If we take our calipers and figure that the normal sinus beat landed here, let's bring our other point over, and we can see that there was a little bit of a delay here. In fact, there's more than just a compensatory pause, that this P wave occurred actually a little bit later. Now let's move on and see what happens here. Now if you compare this odd looking beat to this one, it looks about the same, but it comes even earlier. How can you tell that? Well, look at the distance between the end of the T wave and the QRS complex that this PVC represents and compare it with the end of this T wave and this QRS. And so you can see that this beat came even earlier than that one. It was even more premature. There's no relationship between the previous QRS complex and the PVC. So this occurred quite early, but the interesting thing is when you look after the QRS complex, something has changed. You can see that there's a smooth T wave here, but this T wave has a big bump going downward. Now what this is, is a retrograde P wave. Now what is a retrograde P wave? Well, let's go back to our conduction system. Remember that our AV node is capable of conducting impulses down from the atria to the ventricles. But in many patients, these cells are also able to conduct in a backwards direction. That means if a PVC arises from the ventricle and manages to get into the Purkinje system, it can travel up the AV node and wind up emerging on the atrial side of the AV node and result in an atrial depolarization, which will be traveling in the opposite direction than a normal sinus beat. That means that following a PVC, if we have a normal sinus beat here, you'll have a PVC that'll look bizarre looking, and there'll be a retrograde P wave following it. That just means that this ventricular beat managed to go up the AV node and wound up emerging right around here and caused a retrograde P wave, which means it's inverted compared with the normal P wave. Going back, we see that this P wave is in the opposite direction than the normal P wave, it's a sharp, spiky signal, so it has high frequency components, and that's a retrograde P wave. And in fact, it landed right around the same point where the normal sinus P wave would have occurred. Following that, there is a compensatory pause again. And then if you look at this beat, you see that it, you also have a retrograde P wave following this ventricular premature contraction or ventricular premature beat. So this is something that you're going to see again and again. An early beat with no P wave in front of it, but is followed by a retrograde P wave in many cases. Not always, though, because here you didn't see a retrograde P wave. Well, let's look at a couple of other examples so that you understand this a little bit better. Well, here's a 12 lead, and you can immediately see that there is this um, regular rhythm underneath here, but then there are all these FLVs. We call them funny-looking beats. They're wide much wider than the underlying QRS complex. They're very bizarre looking, and they occur prematurely. Because if you were to take the R to R interval here and map it out again, you expect the QRS to land here someplace. And then the next one occurs here. All right, so you have this early beat. There's no P in front of it. It's wide and bizarre. It's got these really bizarre looking T waves following it. There's a compensatory pause following it, and this is a typical example of frequent ventricular ectopy. Now, there's a little bit of a trigeminal pattern here. You got normal, normal, premature, normal, normal, premature. Here you have normal, normal, premature, normal, normal, premature. Now, this is interesting, though. If you look at this beat carefully, you'd say, wait a minute, hold on. There's a P wave in front of that beat, and the QRS looks wide, not as wide as the PVCs, but not as narrow as the underlying beat. And it kind of looks halfway in between the PVC and the normal beat, and plus there's a P wave in front of it. Well, what about the PR interval? That's really, really important to look at. The underlying PR interval here is about maybe 180 milliseconds. This PR is significantly shorter. This PR is only about 120 or 150 milliseconds. If you zoom in on that, you probably can make an accurate determination. 
But this is a very cool beat, and it's known as a fusion beat. A fusion beat implies that part of the QRS complex came from this P wave down the normal conduction system, but at the same exact moment, a ventricular premature beat arose somewhere in the ventricle, and they met halfway. So you've got this ventricular premature beat here, and that travels up, and you've got a normal sinus beat that goes down the AV node, and they kind of meet halfway. And that's what a fusion beat means, is that the signals meet halfway, and the QRS complex comes from both the P wave down the normal conduction system and the ventricular ectopic beat. That's a very good way to know that indeed you are dealing with premature beats, is that if you see fusion complexes, you know that these beats are coming from a different part of the conduction system. Okay, last example. I want to show you that uh, if you look at the forest, you see that there's a, some irregularity in here. Uh, in fact, it's kind of interesting because um, if you look at the rhythm strip, you can see PQRST, PQRST. So you've got a couple of normal beats. It's a little bradycardic. The rate here is a little bit below 50 beats per minute. But look at how this P wave kind of changes. So it looks like there's a little bit of a um, uh, variation in the P wave morphology, which basically means that the P wave is coming not just from the sinus node, but there may be some region out here and you've got competition between the two beats. So this is almost like a fusion beat in the atrium because it came almost on time. Maybe it's only a little bit faster, but the P wave looks different because it arose from some place away from the sinus node. Then you have what looks like a sinus beat, then another odd looking atrial beat that's a little bit more premature. Here the rate is 300, 150, 175, 60. So it went from a little below 50 to about 60. So this is a premature atrial beat, a PAB or PAC. And this is probably a fusion between the, those two foci, the normal sinus beat and the premature beat. And then you have a, a third P wave morphology, which is kind of interesting. And then you have these two wide beats. Well, the wide beats are very wide and very bizarre. If we look at the T wave here, it looks exactly the same as this T wave. So I don't believe that there's a P in front of this beat, but there certainly looks like there's a P behind it. Right there is a retrograde P, and following the second beat is another retrograde P. So these two beats came from the ventricle. These are This is a ventricular couplet, and that means two abnormal ventricular premature beats in a row. It's a couplet, but notice how narrow it looks in this one lead. So you kind of have to look at multiple leads in order to be able to determine how wide the QRS is. But this is just an example of how you have to take each beat at a time, look at these little subtle differences in P wave morphology, look for retrograde P waves in order to be able to diagnose ventricular ectopy. And this is a, a bit of an introduction to how to approach an ECG and pick it apart and find all the little details that allow you to precisely make the diagnosis, just like you should if you're an ECG expert. And so for the ECG Academy, this is Dr. Nick. In our next video, we're going to talk about weird kinds of ectopic beats, other kinds of premature beats that you'll come across in order to finish this section on premature beats. Thanks for watching.